You you just couldn't do it, Vince, could you? You you just couldn't leave well enough alone, could you? You just couldn't let the sleeping dogs lie. You couldn't just let it go for once. You just had to do what you knew and all of us knew inevitably you were going to do. This isn't about fairness. It's not even about holding up your talents to the standards set forth in their independent contract or contracts with WWE. This is about greed. This is about ego. This is about control. And this is about power and manipulation over the careers and lives of your alleged independent contractors. That's all this is. It's the ultimate in grossly, pathetically predictable power plays if you've ever seen it. Now, certainly most of you that have clicked on to watch this video know exactly what I'm talking about, and that is WWE meant business. And they were serious about this Twitch and Cameo situation and saying, you're going to surrender over those accounts to the control of WWE. They meant it. And apparently are even distributing new talent contracts involving language to that effect. He just couldn't let it go. Now, as I said in the video a week or two ago talking about Vince saying no to third-party content, if Vince's issue was that you can't go out there using a WWE-owned intellectual property, like your ring name, your WWE name, and use that to profit from outside of the scope of WWE without giving us our cut, I agree. Like, that's fair. Totally fair. And that was all this was about, I would actually be defending WWE in this case, regardless of what the public reaction would be. Because that's just the way it works. You know, goes well beyond fair use at that point in time, that's for sure. If this was about things such as, we don't want people spilling secrets out there for public consumption that weren't approved by us. I also get that. If you don't want these guys twitching or doing cameo stuff or anything like that, that appears during a Raw or NXT or SmackDown uh, TV show, I also get that too. That Those are fair things. But we're not talking about fair here. We're not talking about fairness. We're talking about power, control. The type of thing that you would expect from an incredibly insecure, narcissistic, egomaniac, like Vince McMahon. And uh, what I got to say here is, Vince, you may win now. You may get away with this now, because you certainly will, because the talents, your independent contractors, won't have the nuts, won't have the guts, won't have the cojones, the balls, the grapefruits to stand up to you on this. They should, but they won't. They'll capitulate like bitches. We know it's coming. We know it's already happening. You may get a short-term victory here. But this might be an example of not reading the read of the room. It could really lead to being the straw that broke the camel's back. And as a result, creating some long-term negative consequences from your perspective at least. Uh, that you may not have anticipated. So be very, very careful with this, Vince. Because you might think everything is copacetic and kosher right now, but that doesn't mean it's always going to be the case. And look, like, here, here's what I don't get, is why is it so important to have to control every aspect of these people's lives? Like you're trying to build in language into the contract that you not only own their WWE ring name, but that while they're under contract, you own their personal name. Like that goes beyond independent contractor stuff. That goes even beyond the average typical employee-employer contract, which we all know significantly what WWE does and the relationship it has with its wrestlers, its independent contractors, is way more on the side of employee-employer relationship than it is just the standard independent contractor type of deal. 
independent contractor means truly an independent contractor. There's some entrepreneurialness there. There is some risk associated. There is the ability to go off and do other things. You don't have any of that with WWE. You can't wrestle anywhere that they don't agree to. You can't wrestle anywhere that they don't approve to. Like that's not independent contractor. That is employee employer all freaking day long. It absolutely is. And the fact that WWE and Vince McMahon have been able to get away with this for generations is absolutely sickening. But of course they have, because nobody's ever taken them to task for it. That might not last forever. And for those that are going to sit there and say, well, what's the big deal? These wrestlers, I don't want to hear about these big babies with their big contracts, you know, sitting there whining because Vince is trying to take control of this. Let me put it to you this way. A lot of these wrestlers especially the ones that did Twitch, they ain't making as much as you really think they are. Like, even if you said, okay, the average, the, you know, the lower level talent makes 100 k a year. Okay. But the effective salary is significantly less. Because you got to factor in things such as they've got travel expenses that the company's not comping them for, that the company's not paying them for, because, again, they're not employees. They're independent contractors, things like car rentals, things like hotel stays, things like air travel. Company's not comping any of that, all of that, or even some of that. So how impressive does that $100,000 look? If you're working a shoot job right now, making 50 or 60 K, your effective salary is just the same as not better as a lot of these people that appear on national television. Because not only that, you got to factor in with them as independent contractors. That means Vince of, in the WWE avoids paying a certain level of taxes on things such as social security, things such as unemployment, like the independent contractors are on the hook for that. So their tax bill is significantly larger than the average Joe Schmo employee of a regular company, a regular corporation. And then you also got to think about all the money the company saves by not offering their talents things such as pensions and 401ks and matching and all of that stuff. You know, so when you think about effective compensa compensation and when you think about you know, how much you might make in your real world job compared to a lot of the wrestlers and a lot of that roster, you might be surprised and disappointed and realize, oh, damn, now I get it. For some of these people on Twitch, if they were making an extra five, ten, twenty thousand dollars $20,000 a month, that was their real money. Wrestling was the platform to build a name, get a following to come over here to make your real money. And that's kind of what it is. And beyond all of that, not only is Vince trying to take these accounts over, not only is he going to do inevitably what WWE does and ruin all of it, he's making an entirely different play. The reports are that he's trying to build in contract into the language that this will go against their downside guarantee. And downside guarantee, think of it as basically, this is what you're guaranteed to make throughout the year, no matter what, that's your downside. Uh, but as you go through the year, like if you get payoffs from live events and shows and merch and all of that, like you could make more than your downside guarantee, but the downside guarantee is kind of like your your floor. Like that's what you know you're going to make no matter what. And throughout the year, you're drawing against that to get up to that or more so. You want to get obviously above that. But what WWE is trying to do here is not only take over these revenue streams for their talents, not only are they trying to take ownership of this, they are basically trying to rob directly from these people that are not their employees. These additional revenue streams, fold them into the WWE's coffers, and oh, by the way, have that work all towards their downside guarantee. What type of bullshit is that? You could basically take their Twitch or Cameo money, roll it up under your umbrella, then not use them on TV, and they're still only making 90 or 100K or 150K or 200K or what the hell it is, instead of the 300, 350, 400K they could have made if they were doing this side hustle on their own without WWE's help or interference. I, that's just mean, man. That's just bullshit. Damn, you're fraudulent, especially when you're talking about the constructs of an independent contractor type of relationship. The best way I can equate that type of scenario to you guys that may not be fully following the logic, let's say you got a main hustle, your main main employer, and you make, let's say, 50K a year. Okay. It's not great, not terrible, you know, just kind of middle of the road, but enough to live on. You make 50K a year. But you realize that you have bigger goals, bigger visions, maybe you have a family, you want to get a bigger house, you want to pay for college, you want to do these different things. So you go and get a second hustle, second job. 
And at that job, you're going to make 10000 in a year, or maybe 15000 So now you're thinking in theory, okay, what well, once was 50000 for one revenue stream, income stream, is now sixty to sixty-five k for two income streams. But now imagine that your main employer comes in and says, hey, you know what? We're taking all that money you earn from the secondary hustle and we're rolling it up into your guaranteed amount that you're going to make here. We will give you no other opportunities to make any bonus or anything else. So that 60 or 65K you thought you were going to make, guess what? You're now working two jobs and you're only making your 50K still. Fuck you. That's an idea of what we're kind of looking at here. And when I say Vince should be really, really careful with this, is it, it goes beyond just control and ego. Like, this is just stupidity. Like, what type of CEO of a major legitimate corporation is worried about these types of things? Shouldn't a CEO be worrying about bigger fish to fry? If he wants to be mad because he didn't know about this or other people in the organization didn't know about this and didn't understand it and didn't understand the appeal, that's their problem. Don't take it out on the talents. If you're mad because you didn't get out in front of it, that you didn't have to control it from day one, which when you normally do, you screw it up anyways, then that's on your ass. That's your fault. That's not theirs. You know, it's, I, I think it's totally fine to ask for a cut of the action, but always having to go that next level and trying to get control is ridiculous. And this is the thing now when you start getting people like Andrew Yang involved, let's say the election goes the way that it could go in November and that you end up with a new president and you end up with a new cabinet. And you end up potentially with a blue majority in one or both houses of Congress. You know, all of a sudden, this is going to get some eyeballs and people are going to really start diving into the overall labor practices of WWE, looking at previous court rulings, even Supreme Court rulings, and all the high-priced legal teams, Vince with McDevitt and so forth, that you could buy won't help you but so much because all of a sudden, once you start getting the politicians involved and they smell that opportunity for good press and good publicity and camera time for themselves, they're going to exploit it to every sensible path of power that they potentially can. Like even if you say, well, it's just going to be the dumb Dems and the loony liberals. You know what? It'll start off that way, but eventually... As the, the leaves are starting to blow in a certain direction, you don't think those opportunistic, hypocritical Republicans are going to jump right on board and say, man, I'm taking that old Jesse Jackson approach, is that a fastball out here popping? They're going to be all over that like fly on stink. So just be careful, Vince, because this might be a bridge too far. But even beyond that, like if you say, well, what do you do? You don't want to stop watching WWE, but you clearly think this is crap. You know, if you're a shareholder of WWE, sell your shares. Hit them where it hurts. Because that impacts company value. That impacts Vince's personal wealth. That's how you make a stand. That's how you let him know. Because the ratings are already going down anyway. So he's just eventually killing himself there as it is. But you, know, you drive down his value in the stock market at a time that the stock market is significantly out of skew with what reality is at a time where it is artificially being propped up in large part due to the confidence of, hey, no matter what happens, the government's going to sit there and bail us out on the backs of the taxpayers. Oh, it's just like a decade ago all over again. And it's basically what it is. But if you sell off a massive amount of WWE stock back into the marketplace, hey, good luck. It sends a message. Go after the advertisers of WWE. Make it known. You've done that before and you've made changes happen. Here's a chance to do just that. Because you know the con the wrestlers, the excuse me, the independent contractors are going to capitulate like a bunch of bitches here. You know they're going to. They don't have the courage or the guts or they feel the leverage to stand up. Nothing's going to happen. You guys can make some change happen here. Or you can make them feel the price and power a little bit. Just be careful, Vince. You might have bit off a little bit more than you could chew here. And I would just ask the, the, the bigger question that should be on the mind of any shareholders, like, A, how did you not see these revenue streams being available out there? B, how did you and your leadership miss that? C, why are you so preoccupied with it now when you're a little late to the game? Why are you so worried about your independent contractors? Why aren't you worrying about drive, increasing your ratings and increasing revenue and you know, all of these other things that a CEO should be concerned about. 
It's just all about power and control with Vince. More times change, the more that man stays exactly the petty ass same.